Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Limited Development and welcome to our weekly tutorials. And this week I'll be showing you how to save and load data in your application. Now in the simulator here, I have an example of what we'll be creating today. We have a simple save button, our load button, our set text button from our text field to our label. Now what we basically do is, in the text field, we can simply write out text and then use our set text button to set that text in the text field to our label and then press our save button. Now this saves the text in our label to an NS string and then if we just get rid of all of the text in here and let's just type in a different different text so it's different from the first one and set that now. Now because we pressed the save button on our previous text, the lemon text, if we press the load button the label now loads to what we saved it to. So if we set it to hello, save that, and now change the text again, now it should save, well, it should load back up to hello. So that's simply how what we're going to be creating today. So already on my project set up, it's a simple single view application, and I've simply named it saving and loading data for the purpose of this tutorial. Now the first thing we want to do is add our outlets for our text field and our label and the actions for our buttons. So if we go into our viewcontroller.h and just after the interface here, UI view controller, do a bracket and press enter. Now I'll just zoom in for you all now. So we want to start off by typing IB outlet UI text field space asterisk and I'll simply name it text field and then that with a semicolon. Now press enter and do it again. IB outlet space UI label space asterisk and I'll simply name it label so it's easy to understand when we come to the code. Okay then so once we added our two outlets we need to add our three action buttons. So do dash bracket IB action and I'll name the first one simply the save button. If we copy that now and paste it three times, you have all the same there. So name the second one simply load, and the third one set text. So really simple to understand when we come all to decoding. So if you want to pause the video there and catch up on all the outlets and actions, but now I'll just zoom out and we go into our view controller.m. And then just after the implementation, I'm gonna press enter a few times so you can clearly see. What I'm typing it, and I'll zoom in for you. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, our set text button. So we do dash bracket IB action set text space curly bracket and press enter. Now what we need to do now is have the label. So we type out the name of our label, which we named it label dot text to equal the text which will be displayed in the text field. So it's simply label.text equals text field dot text. And that have a semicolon. And that's simply that button all done there. So just after that now we can do dash bracket IB action. And then this time we we'll do the save button. And again bracket and press enter. And what we need to do now is create an NS string for our label. So to do that, we do NS string. And I'll name it simply save string space equals label. So basically, it's going to save whatever is displayed in our label to our string dot text. And that raise semicolon. Press enter. Now we use NS user default. So NS user default, so there we go, space, and I'll simply name it default, space equals space, bracket, and again, ns user default, space, standard user default, and then have a bracket and a semicolon, and then press enter, now we do bracket, default, space, set, object, and in the ID, we put the NS string, which we named save string. 
and for the key, do at symbol, quotation mark, quotation mark, and this time we'll put saved string, just to give it a simple name there. And then press bracket and a semicolon, and then press enter, and the last line now we do bracket default synchronize, and then another bracket and a semicolon. So basically what we've done there, we've created an NS string using NS defaults. And basically, when it, whatever is displayed in the label, as soon as you hit the button, it will save that text in the label to our NS string. And now if we want to load the data in our NS string back to our label, we now need to create the load button. So we do dash bracket IB action bracket load and again bracket and press enter and this time we simply do ns use that default space asterisk default space equals space bracket ns user default space standard user default quite similar to our save code there and this time we do ns string. Oh, make sure we put a bracket and a semicolon on the end of that first line. Sorry. So now we do ns string space asterisk load string. We're going to name it now. So it's like the save string up here, but this one's a load string. Space equals space bracket default space object for key and this time and just like in our save string up here as we want it to load from the same place we we'll simply put in saved string and after the quotation mark there we do bracket semicolon press enter and then bracket now the label which we named it our outlet will set text in our inner string which we have named here load string so load string, bracket, semicolon, and then save that. So that's all the coding that's basically needed now to save and load our strings into our label. So as our save button here saves what's in the label to our string, our load button then loads the string into our label. So if you want to pause the video there and catch up on all of that coding. But now I'll zoom out and I'll go into our viewcontrol.xib and I'm going to create the layout similar to the wire having the iPhone simulator. So we have two buttons at the top. The first one was named save. The second one was named load. We had a label. Space it out and I'll center the text. We are set text button our text field, so I'll just quickly place them in there. And name this button here, set text. So now we've got all our objects in place, click on files owner, and go to our connections and link up all the connections, so our label to our label, text field to our text field, load button to our load button. I'm simply going to do touch down our save button to our save button and our set text to our set text. So now once we've done all that now we can go to build and run and test it out on the iPhone simulator. Okay then so now once it's loaded in the iPhone simulator we simply click on our text field and we simply type in some text so Type in this tutorial is awesome, and if we set our text, it is now displayed in our label. We can then save the text, and now if we quit the iPhone simulator, and then go back into build and run, so then the application has stopped running, it's completely quit. So we're building it again for the first time, and as soon as we load, press our load button, the text we saved will simply load back up into our label. So if we just wait for the iPhone simulator to load back up. Now once it's loaded, we press our load button and it has remembered or well, it has saved our 
text in a, in a string. So we've quit the application, loaded it back up, and now the label is displaying what we saved. So if you go back into it and type in a different text, set text. Now before saving it, if I press load, the previous one text loads up as that's what's saved in our inner string. But now if I set text again to Geek Element, save that. And again, quit the application. Build and run it again. And just to show you that it's all working perfectly. Then once it loads back up now, press our load button. Now we're displaying Geek Element. Just to show you that you can change what's saved in inner string numerous of times and save it and load it whenever you like. So that's simply how you save and load data in your application. I hope this helps in any of your apps or projects at the moment. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe and also leave us a comment or send us a message if you want to suggest any tutorials yourself or if you just want to give us any feedback on how we can improve our tutorials. But most importantly, make sure you favour this video, like it, thumbs up, share it with all your friends. But thanks for watching. Don't forget if you haven't, subscribe and I'll see you all next week in our next tutorial. Hey guys, Aaron here. Please support us by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter and checking out all our apps by simply searching Geeky Lemon on the App Store. And make sure you visit our website where we have a full list and full source code for all our tutorials and visit our blog, forums and all the other great features we have to offer on our website.